Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome to this raw review and this will be the happiest you see me in this video because this show fucking sucked, okay? It fucking sucked. I, I, I don't see how you could even make an argument otherwise. The company gave you nothing positive to argue off of except for the first segment and I can see people arguing that and that's fine. Uh, let, let's just start. So the show kicks off with Lesnar coming out, and you know it, it, it's it's what it is. I'm glad they're actually having him on Raw, but at the same point, as other people have mentioned, it's been two fucking months. Which point, you know, I'm all for the champion not always being on Raw, but once in eight weeks is not enough. But whatever. Good start to the show. Glad Lesnar's there. There's a guy in the crowd covering his ears, cause uh. I guess he was waiting for the fireworks that never went off. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, Heyman says that the problem will be solved by Lesnar. I'm going to be honest. Okay, so... I don't like Lesnar. I, I kind of hate Lesnar at this point. I don't really care for Paul Heyman. And I see no reason to care about Samoa Joe. So... I wasn't paying that much attention to this segment, to be honest. Uh, Paul says the Kikita clutch was everything Joe said it would be. And then he feared it happening to Brock. But he said it won't happen because Brock won't let it or some bullshit. Joe comes out to the ring and right away they have a, like a scuffle. It's, it's, it's cool. The entire locker room comes out to pull them apart, which I'm all fine with in theory. Well, first security comes out and then they level security, which was good. I'll, I'll give them that. And then the whole locker room came out. My gripe with this, for one, it's not the whole locker room. So, Michael Cole, Corey Graves, Booker T, don't fucking say it's the whole locker room. I didn't see Roman Reigns in that crowd. I didn't see Finn fucking Balor in that crowd. I saw Curtis Axel. I saw Enzo and Cass. I saw the club. That is not the whole locker room. But anyway, uh, I think the biggest name helping them was Big Cass. Then, so right off the bat, I'm kind of meh about it, and I'm like, what well, could only go up from here? I remember thinking that. And then Elias Sampson was in the ring, which... I like Elias Sampson. Now, uh, he, he says that the crowd should uh, keep their cell phones down, which is humorous because last week he was getting a lot of cell phones, and now he wants people to stop doing that. Good job, Elias. He sings his song. It did seem like there were more phones today. Dean Ambrose cuts him off, which forces them to give us a celebration from last week's miseration. Okay, fine. By this point, I'm already bored of this show. Um, the match itself, don't care for Dean Ambrose. Uh, Elias Sampson definitely still can't carry a match by himself. And frankly, that's what Dean Ambrose needs. You can argue it all you want, but... Every good match he's had has been with a really good wrestler. You can't argue that. He had a good match with AJ Styles, with Triple H. Just saying, guys. Just say Oh, and Seth Rollins a whole bunch. But yeah. Um, Miz runs in, almost distracts Dean, which is stupid. Like, It, it adds on to the stupid thing where you get your finisher and it's not the end of the match. Now a run-in can't end a match. So, like, Miz distracts uh, Dean Ambrose, Elias Sampson tries to pin him, Dean Ambrose kicks out. So now we have to have another minute of the match, which we know the conclusion that it's coming to. Okay, it's whatever. Um, it it kind of looks weird. I don't know what happened to Elias Sampson, but he was down for like 10 seconds. And they had to do that so that Miz could distract Dean Ambrose long enough. Ambrose looking like he's about ready to fucking kill somebody. Elias steals one. Who cares? Come back from commercial break, we get another Goldust video package. I think I'm gonna start putting these on mute. Because they're not good. I don't know what he's talking about. Don't care. He says that our truth is gonna turn on him, so he did it first. We have some shitty motive now, that's something at least. We see Miz backstage when Kurt runs after him, yelling at him. Basically, the whole segment is designed to bring up the cell phone thing again. Because Miz says, hey, you weren't here last week to protect me because you had personal business. And that was all we got about the cell phone thing this week. So, blink and you missed this segment. So, we get a 
Cedric Alexander video package, so I guess he's healed up from his injuries. And then we skip to Cedric and Noam in a locker room, and Cedric says he's done with Dar and Badmouth's Fox, which I'm okay with. I mean, it's whatever. The storyline did need to end. But as it turns out, Noam Dar was Skyping Alicia Fox, so she has a neck injury. That's a thing. I don't know if she's seriously injured. I hope she isn't, because I feel like she's she has this bad problem with like chunks of time where she just doesn't show up. I hope those aren't always injuries, but yeah. So we get a match between these two. Okay, whatever. We come back from commercial break to Cedric Alexander coming out, and then Dara comes out. Interesting spot because on the Titan Tron they had the phone screen. So you could see Alicia Fox Skyping uh, Noam Dar. My gripe with this is that she said a few things and she kept repeating herself. Um, okay, I, I get it. She's supposed to be annoying. Uh, but you know, it, it's like one of those things where people can be annoying to where I didn't want to watch the segment. I'm just saying. Uh, she distracts him when the bell rings. Cedric nails him with his finishing move, which was a cool-looking move. Thank goodness, because I didn't want to see the stupid match. We get a Roman Reigns video package. Apparently, next week, he's uh, announcing his SummerSlam plan. So he's already John Cena level, where he just chooses what he wants to do. Sorry, I'm checking the NBA scores. And the Golden State Warriors won. Yay. Okay, so we get a Bray Wyatt promo. Orton is still in his cutaway, which I thought was weird. And at this point, because I wanted to watch Game 5, because I figured either it's going to be the last game or it's going to be the most critical game in the series. And I couldn't because Raw was on. <laughs> uh, so I started doing this thing where, where I wanted to show you guys where the show, in theory, should be strengthening up. You should be making this a show you don't want people to miss. Because if you have people who are in both camps, you want them to pick Camp WWE, not Camp NBA. And you didn't do a fucking good job. So anyway, um, Br Bray explains why he attacked Seth Rollins. It's because Seth took his name in vain. What? You've got to be fucking kidding me. Lame as fuck. Seth comes out and expresses the same sentiment that I'm expressing. He's like, what, because I called you a false prophet? I think commentary has done that like a hundred thousand fucking times. Rollins calls Bray a coward, but then Bray says that he is beneath Bray Wyatt. So I'm like, so let me get this straight, okay? So Bray Wyatt, who I don't care what anybody says, he's a mid fucking Carter. Okay, you can argue all you want. He is saying that Seth Rollins, one of the only like four fucking main eventers they have, is beneath him. So, there's, there's this point where Bray Wyatt says so much stupid shit, where watching his promos, I don't want to fucking watch them. And this was one of those moments where he's saying the stupidest shit. Anyway, let's move on. Bray says Seth found the will to slay a king, but a god is forever, and then the lights go out, the cutaway thing pops up. Bray isn't in the ring, we get it again. Boom, he's on the Titantron, pre-taped video. Hoo hoo hoo, scary. We get an interview backstage with the Hardys. This is a really white meat babyface promo. It sucked. Just saying, maybe it sucked because it was also after a sucky promo from Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins. Jeff was trying to be humorous while Matt was being serious. No. Okay, let's move on. We come back from commercial, and again, this is around the time that Game 5 just started. And Kalisto is in the ring. Kalisto. Oh, well maybe he's wrestling somebody cool. Maybe he's got a feud building with somebody. Oh, no, he's wrestling Apollo Crews. Vince McMahon, f -f -f fucking God. End this fucking storyline. I don't care for Titus Brand. It it's okay, it's humorous, I get the joke, I get the appeal, I'm fine with it. But Kalisto, wrestling them every other week, doesn't do anything for anybody. Nobody's gaining anything from this. This is just, it's stupid. Again, this 
is like the only thing on TV that should, in theory, be challenging Game 5 of the NBA Finals right now. And your solution is Kalisto versus Apollo Crews. Okay, whatever. Uh, Cruz wins the match. Literally, I wasn't even watching at this point. I was looking at my phone, looking at the computer, anything else, because I don't care for these segments that much anyway. Uh, the curious is I was in the front row because Titus O'Neil is trying to recruit him in the Titus brand, and they come in the ring, take a selfie. Okay, whatever. Slater and Reinhardt are backstage when Miz comes up and makes uh, Heath Slater an offer to join the Miz's entourage, at which point Rhino is irritated that he's not being invited, and he keeps pointing out, hey, he's already got a tag team partner. We eat Cheese Whiz together. Okay. Okay. Well, Miz says, hey, Heath Slater, I'll give you anything you want. Heath Slater goes, hey, I want an IC title match. Miz is like, sure, I'll make it happen. So the Miz gives Heath Slater an offer for what he wants, and Rhino decides that that's not good enough. Hey, you have a tag team match later tonight. Against us. Hope you find a partner. So Alexa Bliss comes out uh, and says a few boring words before Nia Jax comes out. Cool. She's pissed. She steps up to Alexa Bliss. She says, hey, this is bullshit. And Alexa, being Alexa Bliss, blames Mickey James and Dana Brooke, which makes sense. I'm fine with it in theory. But then they come out. So now we have four women in the ring, and the dynamic is really stupid because Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax are heels, yet they have gripes, and then Mickey James and Dana Brooke, while they're acting like high school mean girls, they are the faces here. Okay, fine, whatever. Nia seems stunned by what, what Mickey James and Dana Brooke are saying that Alexa Bliss said last week. So, Nia Jax didn't watch Raw? Because Alexa Bliss is there and tries denying it. She's like, no, I didn't say those things. Well, Naya, she said it on camera. Yeah, you can just go back and watch Raw and see that. Okay, so then Emma comes out. What? Emma and the commentators are like, whoa, Emma's here. She's came back. So was she injured or something? I have no idea. Is this going to be her character from now on? She shows up one time and then doesn't show up for a month or two? And woo, she came back! And, and I even put that in the notes. Um, oh, well, wait, no, I, I put it in there. Emma comes out now, she hasn't been on TV for like a month after not being on TV for months. After not being on TV for like a year. Yeah, okay. So she says she's back, deserves a title shot when Sasha Banks comes out. So how in the fuck does Emma deserve a title shot? Literally, I could not tell you a single one-on-one -on -one match that this girl has had. Number one contender? Oh, God, no. So, obviously, the full ring breaks into anarchy. Six-woman tag match formed. I think we saw a match like this, like, a few weeks ago. I'm seeing it again. Woman's revolution, my fucking ass. Bliss abandons her team without her belt. I don't know where her belt went. And then Sasha makes Emma tap. So, again, you you have Emma come back and have her tap in her first match back. I want to say her team lost before, too. So is she just going to come back to tap to Sasha Banks every week? I'm sorry, every, every other month? We had a Finn Balor video package. The thing that caught me off guard about this was, wait, Finn Balor ain't on this episode of Raw? Okay, whatever. I'm happy about that. I don't like Finn Balor. But, just odd, because I don't think he was on Raw last week either. So now he's been off Raw for two weeks now. So we get Corey Graves interviewing Bailey. This is one of those pre-taped video segments away from the location. She says she wrestles, puts smiles on people's faces. That she acted like anybody else would in the situation, not using the kind of stick. I'm, I'm fine with this, okay? I, I was angry about it at first, but you know what? I'm fine with it. She stuck to her character. She lost the match. There was no harm done. Uh, she says she knows she can't win matches with hugs, but she wants to win at the fairway. Okay, that's, that's, that's fine. She's going to keep fighting. Well, my question is, where is she at, though? So you're going to keep fighting, but you haven't been on Raw for two weeks. Okay. And then she asks Corey Graves for a hug to end this segment. Yeah. 
So Maurice has been rejecting the Miz's attention all night, which is humorous. Like every time he goes to kiss her, she pulls away. Humorous. I'm, I'm glad. Glad that was a thing. Heath Slater and Rhino versus the Miz, and mystery tag team partner, the Bear from last week. So the crowd chants, "We want Bear." Why? So okay, th th this segment it, it, it's horrible. It, it's just just straight up horrible. We get bear puns. They are unbearable. Ha 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 ha. Oh my god, why did they do this? Why? It made no fucking sense. I, I saw the smarks. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And... Mm. Okay. Okay, but the crowd wanted the bear. So you can't chant delete. It, it, it just... Uh. Okay, so... Miz turns on the bear, demasking him, expecting to be Dean Ambrose. It wasn't. Surprise! Uh, Miz gets hit with a spinning heel kick, and he's out for fucking ever. Uh, the bear slides in, hitting Slater with Jake Roberts' signature DDT. Maurice yells at Miz, telling him to pin Slater, because... Why the fuck is Miz knocked out? It was just a spinning heel kick. Did I miss something? Was there a commercial break in there that I fell asleep during? I'm confused. It was a spinning heel kick. The Miz, out for like a minute. Okay, whatever. When he turns around, he sees it's Ambrose, who is in the new bear costume. So we had two bears tonight. And Ambrose proceeds to hit. Uh, well, he, he scares Miz. Miz backs up, knocks Maurice off the ropes. Oh, this spot. And then with Miz, which distracts the Miz long enough before he gets hit by a DDT as well. Okay, so last week, the Miz Dean Ambrose segment was the best part of the show. This was fucking horrible. Fucking horrible. You can't defend this segment. You, you, you can't. Okay? Maybe it's the fact that I knew something better was going on. Maybe it's the fact that, that, that the shit before it sucked as well. And I knew the shit after it was going to suck too. I just, this, okay. So Slater pins the Miz for the win. And then I start questioning this. Why didn't the referee call for the bell? Because Dean Ambrose came in and hit both people in the match with his finishing move. He's not wearing the mask. He took it off. The referee knows it's not the same fucking guy. Okay, and then they, the commentary table keeps saying how odd it is that there's a bear. I've never seen anything like it. Well, remember, what, two, three years ago when there was a fucking bunny rabbit? Did you just forget about that already? Or how about the time 10 years before that when there was another bunny rabbit? Guys, this is not first time. So we get Neville versus Rich Swan, And by this point, yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little pissed off because the show is kind of sucking at this point. And, and so I put in the notes, this is the best product they can put on during the NBA Finals. Really? Really? Because it's literally the only Raw that overlapped with it. Because I want to say last week it was Sunday, which meant I had to choose Extreme Rules over a game from the NBA Finals. And then if the Finals continued, which they didn't, I'd have to skip Money in the Bank to see it if I wanted to watch it. So I was going to have to miss another game. So, for the love of God, okay, this is your warning for next year. Okay, put on a better fucking product at this time of the year. Anyway, b back to this. So Neville attacks Swan before the match. Uh, it was a really mediocre beatdown, I must say. He gets a promo saying, Kira Tozawa better watch out. Because uh, apparently Titus O'Neil tweeted that Kira Tozawa was going to get a Cruiserweight title shot. This is where they should have went instead of even involving TJP, who wasn't on Raw this week. So I leave the room because my apartment is hot as fuck, and I, I was telling my roommates to open their window, put the fan in there, which they were already on top of, but aside from the point, I missed what, whatever happened. I came back in, Cass got attacked again. Club talks shit because we're getting a rematch from last week. Yay! Looks like Enzo and Cass will actually wrestle this week because Cass comes out. And the reason I'm speeding up is because my, my camera battery is dying. Because of course it is. It's going to continue to suck. So the crowd seems dead at first. They kind of recoup a little bit towards the end. Cass gets knocked out and then Enzo gets pinned. Eh, who cares? Uh, the club continue beating Enzo down before the big show comes out. So the big show and Enzo are like buddies now. Uh, Big Cass gets up, and he's sitting on the ropes 
when Enzo kind of like falls into a hug on Big Show and like boxing, they do, they do that so that way you, you can't attack each other. So I don't see why Big Cass was all angry. He was scared that Big Show was going to knock him out. And Big Cass looked all moody like a poor teenage girl, to be honest. I mean, it's whatever. We go to commercial, we come back, Enzo runs into Big Show backstage and asks if Big Show attacked Cass. Because Cass said one hit knocked him out. And this makes no sense. It's, no. It makes no fucking sense. None whatsoever. Because if he's doing it to get close to Enzo, for one, he never showed signs of it beforehand. Two, he attacked Enzo twice, too. So how did this plan, how is this plan supposed to work? It wasn't. The plan makes no fucking sense. Why would Big Show care about them anyway? Show channels his inner mudlup and gets starts getting angry and he says he's like no big ass he there's only one word to describe him he's s a w f t soft and it just no this, this was horrible no we know it wasn't the big show why 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 are they doing this so we get Joe interviewed backstage and he gets asked if his if he has changed his plans for Great Balls of Fire he says he hasn't. It's boring. It's Samoa Joe. Surprise. And we finally get our main event. Cesaro and Sheamus versus the Hardys. Sheamus gets a quick pinfall. I, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't watching at this point because I was just like looking at my phone. So who knows? Matt Hardy gets one. Okay. Still wasn't paying attention because the first two falls always get passed. So I knew they didn't matter. And two out of three falls matches don't make sense in today's WWE. If you're curious about that, I might just put up a video about it. So just make sure you comment and tell me to put up that video. But uh, the match ends in a double count up. So he here, here we go. The the main event they'd been building to all night. They didn't fucking do. Why did we have to have it a two out of three falls if you knew it was gonna end in a double knockout, a, a double ring out count, count out? There we go, double count out. You knew it was ending in a double count out. Why even have it in this stupid fucking two out of three falls? Did that excite people? Did that keep people from watching the NBA Finals Game 5? WWE, I, I, I don't understand. So I, I made a little bit of notes complaining. So the show started off on a mediocre note, and it had a hard time recouping. I made that right after the beginning. And it didn't recoup. This show fucking sucked. There was no Roman Reigns, no Bailey, no Finn Balor, no Austin Aries. There were four tag team matches, including a main event two out of three falls match. Tag team matches, left and fucking right. It's interesting because so many tag team matches, yet it feels like nobody important was fucking there. What, did everybody ask for the day off so they could watch the game? Because I am so confused about this. I really am. The, the main eventers are not in action. So all five guys who were in the Extreme Rules main event, did not wrestle tonight. Finn Balor wasn't on TV. Roman Reigns wasn't on TV. He was in a video package. Two of them, actually. And let's see here. Uh, Samoa Joe wasn't. Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins had a stare down. These are supposed to be your top five guys. With Brock Lesnar included, but he's never fucking wrestling on Raw. Where were they? Vince, for the love of God, I, I, I don't understand this. So, you finally have competition to compete with. One game. You only have to make one good week of Raw. And instead of trying, which is something Vince McMahon would actually fucking do, you give up and put out this shitty-ass show. I would be hard-pressed to find anybody who has anything good to say about this episode. You can be happy by the first segment, I'm, I'm eh about it, but you know what, I, I get it, if you're a fan of either of these guys, seems legit, okay? But, th this show just fucking sucked. You never got off the ground, your, your top stars weren't fucking there. Good tag team matches left and right. Tag team matches without actual tag teams in them, reek of, we have nothing to fill this time, we need to get people on the card. Meh. Enzo and Cass getting beat up. Let's, let's have a quick match there. Mmm. He slid on Rhino. I haven't been on TV. They don't watch basketball. Put them in a tag team match. It, it's just... It's dumb. 
the six-man tag match for the women. And I'm going to reiterate this, because I've been saying this since women's revolution, well, the Divas revolution, I think it was at first, started. Which was, you can't get multiple people over at the same time like this. You just can't. Tag team matches don't elevate anybody. When you're in a situation like this, Mickey James and Dana Brooke, they don't look important at all. Emma looks even less important because she just does nothing but lose. And then you have your heel team that have all this these, is, these issues, if you will. It just... And I can't stress this enough. Because literally, you had one week to put on one good show. One. And you couldn't even come close. You couldn't even come close. This Raw, legitimately, it is the shittiest Raw I've reviewed so far on this channel. It was boring. Nothing important happened. Literally, okay, I can't name a single thing that on this show that will matter literally next week. Well, we got Big Cass getting attacked in. Well, Enzo and Cass have been attacked four times now. Think about that. Four fucking weeks in a row. So this isn't something new. This isn't groundbreaking. This is a repeat fucking segment. I don't care. You have two cruiserweight matches, I think, because we had one early, right? Right? Yeah, we had Noam Dar as Cedric Alexander. Okay? One of the matches didn't fucking happen. And then the other one ended in like 10 seconds, tops. Cruiserweights were brought in to, to, to alleviate some of this pressure to support the hardcore wrestling fans. How am I? I don't know yet. Okay, I am assuming that everybody out there is just as pissed as I am because this Raw fucking sucked. I missed game five for this. For this. And nothing important happened. This show fucking sucked. Where is Roman Reigns? Oh, well, you know what? You know, he's going to be on TV next week. He's telling us what his SummerSlam plans are. And you know what that means, guys, right? Because SummerSlam is still two months out. He's number one contender for SummerSlam. You know that, right? What else could he be doing? He is announcing his number one contendership. Because he's Roman Reigns, and he does what he fucking wants. This show, bad on so many levels. If you had anything positive to say about this, please, for the love of God, leave them in the comment section. Because this episode of Raw legitimately felt like WWE gave up. Like they just decided, you know what? We're not going to get good views this week. The ratings are going to suck. Just throw out whatever shitty shit we can. And hopefully the fans will watch. Fuck you. Thanks for wasting three hours of my life. Again, and now an hour for the review and the processing and the video. Because this raw is garbage. I would have been happier watching game five and seeing the Cavs get fucking stomped. Hopefully SmackDown will be better. Because I don't feel like being this angry again tomorrow. But I might have to be. Because maybe some show is airing a special episode tomorrow. And Vince just gives up. <laughs>